Well, hello, this is Dave Connor, Program Director here at the Red Friday Organization, and welcome to Red Friday Talks. I was a, a firefighter, a captain, and a district chief in a large career fire department. I have a lot of experience with grief and self-blame, and we were asked by one of our uh, followers to expand on our views a little bit on taking things personally and, and processing loss. And it's, it's my hope that everybody gets a little something out of this session. It's particularly going to apply to first responders and nurses, people who uh, serve as PSAs and social workers, any facility staff in a care facility, uh, palliative care um, uh, therapists, and any others really who are affected by the experience of loss and grief. So most of the people we find that are drawn into these helper roles that I, I just mentioned, they, they have a, a, some level of empathy. And uh, that can be left with a, a sort of a, a sense of responsibility and loss. And, you know, may, you may be new to this role or you may have decades of experience, but we're going to hope you get something out of this, something useful in uh, this material. So let's start the conversation with, with self-blame. You know, we, we don't use the term accidents in emergency services. An accident can be neither predicted nor prevented. So if it can be predicted then it can be prevented. So anytime an unintended or unwelcome or, or unforeseen outcome shows up, that doesn't make something an accident. So that's why we call motor vehicle collisions crashes instead of accidents. But the term actually does apply here to what we're talking about today because everything you react to or respond to is an accident of time and space. An accident of time is because it occurs while you're at work and an accident of space because these things occur in an area where you have some response area or you have some, some influence on outcomes. So remind yourself, when you start to apply blame to yourself for your minor role not having the desired effect, think about the, the fact that the event would have taken place whether you were there or not. So really, how can the outcome belong to you? They simply can't. So another over, often overlooked uh, aspect of trauma exposure is, is how that effect can be amplified when it occurs inside of our intimate space, you know, close enough to, to smell breath and food and that sort of thing. And, and, and that touching close makes an event feel really much more personal. And as, as we amplify it, our experience uh, seems to have additional meaning for us because of that intimate space. But in reality, these things are, are someone else's experience. And, and really, um, it's a good thing to remember that when we're starting to be exposed to suffering that we can't alleviate or we're seeing people really struggling and, and we start thinking we should be making ourselves feel responsible. It's a really good time when you're applying some self-blame to remember the thought I just told you about, about accidents of time and space, that this stuff would have happened whether you were there or not. So I, I want to move on to, to talking about grief for a minute. Many of us have a really underdeveloped or even sometimes unhealthy relationship with grief. You know, growing up for many of us, it was usually only talked about during times of death. But grief is really about loss, and it can look an awful lot like a sudden onset of depression. So if we look at grief as loss, let's consider that what we've lost and, and why does it leave the pain that it leaves behind. So, so ask yourself when you're struggling with this, what did you get out of a relationship? You know, the, the more you're feeling now, the more you got out of that relationship. When you're experiencing that, that grief, you know, reflect on that, what that person did for you, you know, the, the meaning and the connection that you may have got. How are you going to remember them? And, and if you're going to remember them or simply recall them in the future, you know, not to say you should resist the grief experience, not at all, but embrace it. Embrace it with your full attention, but do it with a sense of gratitude for what you've received. This is what we call compensation. And the, the best way we find to, to generate or see the amount of compensation is to ask yourself. And sometimes, you know, as a helper, you can find yourself in a role where, where you are having to ask this question to someone else. But ask this question when you're hurting. Say to yourself, if I could take away all of this pain and grief and sadness that you're feeling right now, but in order to do that, I would have to erase the memory of this person from your mind, would you have me do it? So you think about that for a minute, and, and you'll find that most of the time, whether it's yourself or others that you're dealing with, they're going to say no. 
And when they say no, that means that the compensation level is very, very high. Whoever this is, you got a lot out of your time with them. So uh, the final piece on that is to talk about prospects and ask yourself, did the loss allow you to t- have some some sense where you have more time to serve others? Does it does it give you some skills that you didn't have? Did you learn something that you can use later to maybe improve your life or improve someone else's? So again, apologies for the slightly dark tone of this piece, but really intended to, to provide a little understanding uh, and relief on some of those really dark days that, that these kind of careers are going to bring. And we also had a question recently on building resilience, and uh, we're going to come back soon with, with some content on getting a better night's sleep. So thanks for listening, and please visit us at redfriday.org and redfridayacademy.com. This is Red Friday Talks.